But such is the nature of this job, and particularly this subject matter, that I'm never 100% sure what angle I'm going to take until I actually start talking. I, I've already changed my mind from the last time you heard my voice, if, if you were still listening, um, just before the 10 o'clock news. I, I think that what interests me most this morning is not really the question of what's changed. That's, that's too nebulous, and I've got a horrible feeling that the answer might be nothing. Um, and I don't know how fruitful it would be to explore that particular territory. <clears throat> But as we survey the situation one year on from the October the 7th terror attack, I, I, I think that the worst attack, the worst atrocity committed against Jewish people since the Holocaust, I, I, I mean, whatever has happened since, it is absolutely crucial to remember the context of that, of that dreadful day, of that, of that event. Um, whatever we might think has changed, the key question surely is how it's going to end. Let me show you what I mean, okay? Let me show you what I mean. Benjamin Netanyahu has urged Western allies to stand behind Israel or risk strengthening Iran's axis of evil on the anniversary of the October the 7th attacks. And yet, um, on the same day, the United Nations refugee chief has said that airstrikes in Lebanon have already violated humanitarian law. So uh, what is Benjamin Netanyahu asking us to stand behind? This is the UN refugee piece, Filippo Grandi, said yesterday that airstrikes in Lebanon had violated international humanitarian law by hitting civilian infrastructure and killing civilians. Um, I mean, one quick comparison, if such things matter, is the number of children killed in Gaza dwarfs the number of children killed in Ukraine, for example, by Russia. But there are other stories around today as well. The father of one girl still held, one hostage still held in Gaza, has described being pelted by eggs and verbally abused um, while protesting outside an event being attended by Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Right-wing activists shouted at him, you've made enough noise, be quiet, you are cancer in the country. Another um, accused him of being funded by Hamas. Families of hostages still held have described a shift in mood, perhaps a, a, a lessening well, certainly in this case, a lessening of, of concern or sympathy. And then another story, another very troubling story, which probably needs a little bit more analysis than some of the coverage allows, but reports that one in 10 or 10% 10 of, of children polled, or beg your pardon, 18 to 24-year-olds, young people polled in this country, have expressed some sympathy for Hamas. Um, they can be a fairly uh, binary bunch, can't they, young people? I certainly was very binary when I was young. But if you were to charge them with explaining why uh, killing in one direction is meta—I mean, metaphysically, let alone is philosophically different from killing in another direction. You can see why they might struggle. But sympathy for a prescribed terrorist organisation is a complication for many people, a complication too far. And that's just off the top of my head. I'm sure there are other stories around today that will add to the sense of confusion, contradiction and conflict. So we've got a UN chief accusing Israel of already violating humanitarian law in Lebanon. Um, of course, Hezbollah had nothing to do with the October the 7th Hamas attacks in Israel. You've got Benjamin Netanyahu saying that the West must support them, even as the death toll, um, well, it's been in the tens of thousands for a long time now. You've got the father of a hostage still held, describing a change in mood and being pelted with eggs and abused by supporters of Benjamin Netanyahu, who, who is supposed to be, of course, prioritising the safety of hostages hostages, or at least used to claim to be prioritising the safety of hostages above all else. More than 2,000 people have been killed in Lebanon in the past month um, as the focus switched from the Hezbollah-controlled south to the capital of Lebanon. I've also got an interview for you later with the son, an amazing man. I've met some incredible people in the course of doing this job, but this is certainly up there with the very best. Um, and he lost his parents that day. Uh, he has some extraordinary messages um, to share with us. 
And we'll hear that probably later this hour. But here's, here's the question. Um, how's it going to end? I, I mean, what would you have said if I'd asked you that question a year ago? If I'd said to you a year ago, how's it going to end? What would you have said? I think I would have said the IDF is going to go into Gaza. It is going to bring down hell upon the people there in pursuit of Hamas. I was never clear on how you could both undertake a truly bloody campaign on the ground in Gaza while also prioritizing the safety of hostages. But it, it felt inappropriate to point that out at least at the very beginning, it felt indelicate, didn't it? Insensitive to say, hang on a minute. If, if they're killing this many civilians, they're not exactly being careful. So how can they be prioritizing the safety of the hostages at the same time? So I think if you had forced me to clarify, I'd have said, I think a lot of hostages are going to die as well, whether um, as a consequence of the Israeli attacks or at the hands of panicking terrorists. But there will be a point at which Israel feels that it has sated the need for retaliation response or revenge and you choose either one of those r words or indeed all three of them according to your perspective um how is it going to end it's going to end with a death toll in gaza in the thousands so let's say four times more deaths in gaza than hamas managed to inflict upon jewish people on october the 7th i'd have gone four five times cautiously i think and then they will return to this unbearable stalemate, which suits only the purposes of people who are opposed to a two-state solution. That includes people in the Israeli cabinet, in the Israeli government, more perhaps in senior Israeli government roles than at any other point in living memory. And of course, it includes terror groups like Hamas and Hezbollah. Uh, anybody opposed to the two-state solution um, uh, essentially benefits from the sustaining of the status quo. So if you'd asked me a year ago, how is it going to end? Um, I think I would have said that. And my God, I would have been wrong. There's 2,000 people dead in Lebanon now, in the, in the last month alone. Well in excess of 40,000 dead in Gaza, and almost certainly many, many, many more of that. But I will still get messages today saying that you, you can't trust those figures because it's the Hamas-controlled health authorities. Literally nobody honest thinks the final figure is going to be lower than what is currently being released, least of all the Israeli authorities. But if you are clinging to something, I know not what, then you are going to be clinging tight, more tightly than ever. Um, so if you'd asked me 12 months ago how I thought it was going to end, I think that's what I would have said, that, that we, will, we will lurch back, we will swing back to this uh, profoundly unsatisfying status quo where people in Israel live under the threat of missiles and, and have to retreat fairly regularly to, to shelters while people in Gaza live in what is essentially the largest refugee camp in the history of humanity. Um, the occupied territories will remain occupied, and until they are not occupied, the prospect of progress or an unlocking of, of, of the most constipated um, historical tension of our time is, is impossible. But here we are a year later, where Gaza is still under almost constant attack, and the... Um, uh, pro provocations of Hezbollah have brought down upon the people of Lebanon m more uh, ordnance, more missiles, to, to the point where I think 2,000 people are dead now. Um, a quick word. I, today's not the day for, for, for Idiot's Corner. Obviously, it's far too serious. Um, but Lawrence has been in touch to say Israel goes out of their way to avoid civilian casualties. And, and again, a year ago, I would have read that out with, 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 with seriousness and with um, a profundity. Israel goes out of its way. No, Israel says that they go out of their way to avoid civilian casualties. Um, I don't think anybody objective still believes that. And if you believed it in Gaza a year ago, as we waited to see what would happen next, then I'm afraid if you still believe it today, you are lying to yourself. Uh, and a refugee chief in, in, um, of the United Nations already talking about breaches of humanitarian law with the bombardment of 
civilian infrastructure and the killing of civilians there. So, I mean, in the highly unlikely event that anyone still believes that Israel is careful to avoid killing civilians, they're not doing a very good job. So it's either dishonesty or epic incompetence, Lawrence. I'll leave you to decide which one it is. Um, and that question then of how does it end becomes... Well, imagine if it is still the case that things swing back to where they were this time last year or, or, or on October the 6th of last year. The illegally occupied territories are still occupied. The um, uh, terrorist organizations in Gaza and in Lebanon retain their sort of stranglehold upon the windpipes of the population, many of whom would happily see the back of them. The missiles continue to fly into Israel and the responses continue to uh, uh, well, sort of punctuated with bloody responses and bloody retaliation. The people in Gaza remain essentially imprisoned and we just wait to see what the next flare up is going to be. Those are your choices. Those are your choices. Either we will see a, a, a swing back to the status quo or something profound is going to change. And if it's a swing back to the status quo, then for what have all these people died? Oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. And if it is a, a, a profound and permanent shift in the situation, then what does that profound and permanent shift look like? So there are two ways into this. There are two ways into this. The first is the overview, the informed analysis of what the end game looks like. And I don't think anyone would describe the end game at this point as the conclusion, the ultimate conclusion. I, d I just don't see it. Maybe you do, in which case 03456060973. And the second way into it, of course, is the sort of, about the, the, the personal shifts in understanding and opinion. I, I was going to open this hour by asking what's changed. And in some ways, it's the same question because the answer might be nothing except, of course, the number of lives ended, the number of people injured, the number of buildings blown to smithereens, the, the, the amount of territory rendered uninhabitable, the trauma suffered by people coming under fire from Hezbollah or, or, or Hamas rockets, the dead school children, the dead Druze school children playing, um, playing football, being bombed by Hezbollah. I mean, th th the changes for those families are immeasurable, impossible to compute. But, but for the world, for the people still alive, what's changed? I don't know. So here's the number. 03456060973 is the number that you need. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu warns that unless the West remains in lockstep behind Israel, then Iran's axis of evil will uh, be strengthened. The refugee chief of the United Nations warns that Israel is already committing humanitarian uh, crimes in Lebanon. The International Criminal Court remains committed to the uh, arrest of, I haven't checked whether the Hamas leaders on their list are still alive or not, but members of the Israeli cabinet up to and including Benjamin Netanyahu certainly are. Twelve months in, airstrikes carried out on a mosque uh, in the center of Gaza yesterday. So 12 months effectively of killing, death and bombardment in Gaza. And the question, I mean, I think the times are right as Israel, Israeli troops continue to fight Hamas a far longer war than anyone expected when retaliation began for the attacks of October the 7th. I wonder how you think it is going to end. And that is a really horrible question. Because if it ends with a return to the tense status quo, then what the hell has been achieved?